Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I'm going to be doing my May wrap up. What I'm really going to be doing is just talking about the books that I read for middle grade May that I co-hosted with Lee from Dark Roots Creation, Elizabeth from Lizzie Faye Loves Books, and Elizabeth from Stol Soul Stained Inc. That's what the majority of my May was. I did read 30 books, but 21 of those were middle grades, so that's why I'm just going to go ahead and just wrap up that part of my May. And so the first book that I have is Cameron Battle and the Escape Plan by Jamar J. Perry. This was an e-arc that I had that had come out in February and I would just gotten around to it. And it's the conclusion of a duology about Cameron Battle who uh, is a descendant from, uh, I can't remember the name, but it's based on Western, uh, West African folklore and stuff. And I thought it was decent. It was okay. Um, definitely not my favorite duology for like a mythology or anything like that. There were certain things in it that was just not for me that other people won't care about, but it was a me thing more than anything, but it was okay. Then I had um, Dead City by James Ponty, which is a zombie book. It's the first in, I think, a four book series. It's either a three or four book. I don't remember. But anyway, it's a short series. And this is about, uh, Mo is her name Molly? Yeah. It's about Molly who uh, learns that, you know, there are zombies amongst them. They kind of walk around. Uh, most, of po most of the time they don't bother anybody, but there are a few that they do, which is why they have these zombie hunters, which he uh, becomes a part of. And I thought it was fun. It was four stars. Then I have Malamander by Thomas Taylor, which was a reread for me. It's the first book in the Erie on the Sea, I think it's called. And I thought this one was a lot of fun. I remembered liking it from the last time, but I just never continued. And I needed it to be fresh in my mind so that I could continue on with the series. And so, yeah, I, I like this one. It's about Hermie, I don't know, Hermie Lemon, I think, or Herbie Lemon, something like that. That is the lost and founder, and he ends up with a girl coming to him because she is lost and wants him to help find her family. And so that spins him off onto a fantastical adventure and everything, and so it was fun. And then I have My Big Fat Zombie Goldfish by Mo O'Hare, and it's the first in like a chapter book series about this zombie goldfish when um, the main character, who I can't remember his name's brother, decides he's going to be a mad scientist or whatever, and uh, turns the zombie... And, you know, turns the goldfish or puts some goo in there and everything and they bring him back to life or whatever until he comes back as a zombie goldfish. It was cute. It was fun. Um, I read uh, Dead City and this one and several others for uh, my little nod to Zombieathon. And so, yeah, I, I can't wait to see what other kind of things that the zombie goldfish gets up to with the series. And then the next one I have is Haru Zombie Dog Hero by Ellen O. This was an e-arc that I had to read and um, I was a little disappointed in this one because I didn't quite think that it needed to have such descriptions of the animal abuse that was happening to the, exper the dogs that were being experimented on. Because, I mean, yes, they are turned into a zombie, so I knew something was going to happen to the dog. I just didn't need to read about what was happening to the dog, especially in a middle grade book. So I just didn't like this one quite as much as I was hoping. Because I love her Spirit Hunter series. It's a trilogy, and uh, I would recommend you read that one if you haven't read Ellen O. And maybe skip this one. Then the next one I have is Nessie Quest by Melissa Savage, and this one is probably one of my favorite middle grade books that I read for the month of May. It just had some really fun characters, especially Hammy Bean, who is blind, but he doesn't let that stand in his way or anything. He's very cheerful, very delightful, and I just really, really liked him. And it's set in Scotland, so, you know, it was it was just a blast. Of course, they're trying to find the Loch Ness Monster and things like that, so it was fun. 
And then I have Skandar and the Unicorn Thief by A.F. Stedman, which was another e-arc that I had. But this one, I've had for a while because it was from last year, and I just didn't get around to it. And so finally I get to it, and now I can continue because the second book is out in this series. But yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, your standard fantasy middle grade book with the... A uh, kid who has the magic that is like, you know, illegal or they shouldn't have or whatever and of course unicorns. So yeah, um, I, I liked it. Uh, so I can't wait to continue on and see what happens with Skandar and his friends. And then I have Zombie Kid by J. Scott Savage and this was um, the first book in a I think it's a short series too. I can't remember how many is in it, but it's the first book. It's called Case File 13 series, I think. And I, I think in, in this one, like each of them deals with a different kind of like monster type thing. And I don't even think it has like the same kids in it. So they're just all different. And this one just happened, the first one happened to be zombies. And since it was Zombieathon, I gave it a try. And, and it was fun, and, you know, it, it was short as I believe probably more like on the chapter book side of things and um, it was about a kid who ends up uh, being turned into like a zombie and he's trying to figure out how to uh, get back to being human. He has a this thing that he's wearing but he's not sure if he takes it off if that'll fix things and he, so he's you know kind of got figured out before like all his little body parts fall off because he lost like a, an ear and a, thumb, a finger and all that kind of stuff so yeah it was kind of fun. And then I want to eat your books uh, by Karen LaFranc and this is a picture book zombie book but it's you know got of course cute and fun little zombies because these zombies don't want your brains or anything like that they want your books so be sure to keep your favorite book away from the book zombies and everything and it was cute and then I have Peril at Al Park by Martha Jocelyn this is the second book in the Aggie Morton series and this one was probably another one of my favorite books for the month of May when it comes to what I read for middle grade and this one is kind of like uh, based on Agatha Christie if, if she was a child and then her friend's name is Hector Perot and it was just very fun to read. It's a centered around Christmas time, and so they're discovering, you know, what happened to this person that was murdered and all that kind of stuff, and getting themselves into a little bit of trouble. And I listened to it on audiobook because Sarah English is very good at doing the narration, and she gives uh, Hector Perot that cute little Belgian accent and it's just adorable and I recommend it for audio if you like audiobooks. And then I have a Fable Haven by Brandon Mull. This was a book that I've had on my shelf for a very long time and I thought you know I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a try. I had seen somebody mention on one of my videos that they were gonna be reading like the fourth and the fifth one or something like that and I was like hey I have the first one so why not give it a try and I did and I liked it so this is about a brother and sister who have to go to their grandparents house they don't really know them very much there's a reason why they are never invited to go to the house and after a few things happen they find out that their grandparents are um, entrusted with this uh, fable haven which is a place for magical creatures and things like that my only part i didn't like about this book was the brother because he was a pain in the butt and i thought he deserved things that happened to him because you know it's what he gets for being a pain so hopefully everybody said that he gets better in like the second book so i'm hoping then I have What Stayed Buried by uh, Susan Young. This one was a middle grade horror book and it was an e-arc that I had as well and I think this one actually came out in May. And it is about a young girl who, what, by the time she turns, she can see ghosts, it's a family thing, but by the time she turns 13 she loses her ability to see ghosts. And she has to try to do whatever she can to help her family, especially her younger sister who is starting to see ghosts. And there is this bad girl, lady of the, I can't 
can't remember what her name was called. Something lady. Um, yeah, I can't remember. But anyway, um, she's taking some of the kids in town and everything, trying to gain power. And so she thinks she's going to run out of time before because her birthday is looming near and everything. And yeah, it deals a lot with grief and all that stuff as well. And it was really good. I liked it. Then I have The Sea of Terror by Stuart Gibbs. This one uh, was given to me by uh, Simon & Schuster, and um, I really, really like Stuart Gibbs. I'm sure everybody knows that. And this is the third book in the Once Upon a Tim series. It's short, it's funny, it's full of uh, fun like graphics and stuff like that. So it's a very quick read. and. This is about Tim who's a, a knight and he is going with the other knights to try to recover something from another kingdom and uh, has to deal with all the stuff that's in the sea. I did a uh, recent reads of three of the E-Arcs or arc, the Arcs, I just call them Arcs, whether they are Arcs or not, and um, that was in it so if you want to know more about that and a couple other books that I mentioned. You can go and look at that. Then I read uh, Cryptid Hunters by uh, Roland Smith. It's the first book, I think, in the Marty and Grace series. I think there, there's only four books in that series. And uh, I finally got to start the series because a friend sent me this one. And because I had two, three, and four. And yeah, it was a lot of fun. You suspend your disbelief with the fact that Marty and Grace... Um, didn't get ate up by any kind of things in the jungles of the Congo while they were by themselves trying to get to where they needed to go because of an accident that happened that accidentally dropped them into the middle of the Congo <laughs> and everything. But yeah, it's fun. It's about you know, a finding a cryptid creatures. Like there's this dinosaur that's supposed to be living in the Congo and things like that. And their uncle is a cryptozoologist kind of bit veterinarian type person and so yeah it was fun then I have the hunt or hunted by Sky Melky Wagner and I probably butchered the name sorry but this one is the first book in a series I think it's the Deadland series and this is about talking dinosaurs and so it gave me a very big uh, land before time type vibes uh, maybe a little spookier than that, but not real. I think the spooky cover makes it look a lot spookier than like the contents on the inside were, but it was a lot of fun and I can't wait to continue on to see if the dinosaurs can help their um, their little tribes or whatever it is because they found out some things that's going on between like these other dinosaurs and yeah, so it's a lot of fun. Then I have Zachary Ying and the Dragon Emperor, and this one is by this person here who I cannot pronounce and I'm not going to even try, and <laughs> it's the first book in a series. Um, there's not another book come out yet, so I'm hoping one comes out because it kind of leaves you at like a little bit of a cliffhanger, but this is a Chinese folklore, and I thought it was pretty decent. I just had a lot of trouble trying to keep... The, the Chinese names straight and what was going on a little bit and everything. I listened to it on audio because I would never been able to pronounce any of the names. But yeah, it was a fun, you know, like mythology adventure, you know, for middle grade. So then I have um, Red Dragon by Rick Rye Warden and this one is the first book in the Kane Chronicle Trilogy, that's what it is. And I've had this one on my shelf for a very long time, so I was glad to get started on this one. I liked this one, but at the same time, it did, like, confuse me a little bit, and it was really thick. I don't know if it needed to be so thick and <laughs> everything, but I liked the... I can't remember their names. Sadie and Carter, I think. And they find out that, like, they are host for gods and the things, and that they come from, like, a, a line of, like, uh, Egyptian, like, mythology or whatever. And so, yeah. 
It's definitely one of those that I need to continue on with the next two before I forget in remotely anything that I got out of this one. <laughs> but I liked it. And then we have The Lightning Thief here, Percy Jackson series and by Rick Riordan. I This is one of my favorite rereads for middle grade that I did. I've always liked Percy Jackson and I've wanted to continue on with like the companion series that are after this, but I wanted to refresh myself with this series first and so I'm doing a reread of the whole series and so yeah, I really like this one. And I have Field of Screams by Wendy Paris and this is an e-arc that I had gotten. I don't think it's out yet. Yeah, I don't think it's out yet, but I think it comes out in maybe August or July or August. So just keep it in mind. It's, I don't think it's out quite yet, but if you like atmospheric ghost stories, I think you will probably enjoy this one a little bit more than I did. I did enjoy it. Um, I, you know, I made it through and I thought it was decent and I did think that the end of it was a lot more interesting than most of it. And this, so this is like one of those like three star decent reads type, but yeah, it was good, but I don't like really slow atmospheric ghost stories. I like a little bit more of a faster pace. And so for me, this one was just a, a little bit slower than I would like, but I do think that other people will enjoy it a lot more. Okay. So then I have, um, the haunted house next door by Andre. Andreas Medosa? Medos? No, Medoso, I think. Okay, yeah. Probably just butchered that, but anyway, it's the first in a series. I think it's the Ghost Patrol series, and it's definitely kind of like on maybe the chapter book. And if you, I mean, look at the cover, it's adorable. It's got these two little kids, and um, one's a new in town. I can't remember what his name is. I, I can't remember. But next door to him is this kid who has all this kind of weird stuff and he tells him if he needs help with next door just to let him know and gives him his card and it says like ghost hunter, ghost patrol or whatever it is. And so yeah, so it's just a cute little um, book about a ghost and everything and how to get rid of the ghost and it was fun. And this one's a long series because I think there's at least 10 or if not more in the series. But they're very short, and I can't wait to try another one in the series. It'll be fun. I have the uh, Last Kids on Earth, um, it's, uh, and the Nightmare King by Max uh, Brailler or Brailier. I don't know how you say his name. <laughs> and uh, this is the third book in the Last Kids on Earth series, and it's very quick. I listened to it on audio and followed along because it's got all these like fun graphics, like almost on all the pages. And everything so yeah it was very quick and yeah it's a, it's a lot of fun it's about uh, this group of kids who after a monster apocalypse they are like the only ones around and so they have to fight these monsters and by now in the third one they have found some good monsters and so they have made friends with some good monsters so you got the good monsters and the bad monster but yeah this is a lot of fun and I can't wait to continue on with the series and the last one, yay, we finally made it, is um, The Great Shelby Holmes by Elizabeth Olberg. And this is the first book in the Shelby Holmes series. And I will say that I was a little disappointed. I was really wanting to enjoy this one a lot more than I did. But that's, you know, for a mystery about a missing dog, it was a little too thick for that. I would have thought that maybe there would be a couple of mysteries in here that she was solving or whatever it is. I didn't know it was going to be a whole 200 and some pages about, uh, yeah, 229 pages about a missing dog. That just, it, it kind of bored me after a while. If I felt like it was just kind of repetitive on what she was doing to try to figure out things, going back to the house, going back to the house, looking at the same things over and over again. And yeah, it, it kind of lost me in the middle and I will say that I was kind of skimming towards the end just to get finished with it so yeah I, I'll probably try the second book but this may be a series that ends up not being for me 
So there you have it. All 21 books that I read in the month of May. Or at least the middle grade, because I did read more. But yeah, there was a lot. I will say that I could be slightly middle graded out. And so I'm kind of glad to uh, kind of break away from that in June. <laughs> but I did have a lot of fun. And I, you know, I found some uh, good books and some not so good books. Yeah, so have you read any of the books that I talked about? Let me know what you thought about them down in the comments. If you had some favorite middle grade books that you read, let me know what those were too. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!